साधूनम हिदयम तुहम मदन्यते ता जानन्ति नाहम ते भ्यो मनागपि Sadhava, <coughs> the pure devotees, Hidayam, in the core of the heart, Mayam, of me, Sadhunam, of the pure devotees also, Hidayam, in the core of the heart, <coughs> to indeed. Aham, I, I am. Mat anyat, anything else but me. Te, they. Na, not. Jananti, no. Na, not. Aham, I. Devya, then them. Manak api, even by a little fraction. Translation and purport by his divine grace of all powers, please. Uh, pure devotee is always within the core of my heart, and I am always in the heart of the pure devotee. My devotees do not know anything else but me, and I do not know anyone else but them. Purport since. Durvasa Muni wanted to chastise Maharaj Parambarish. It is to be understood that he wanted to give pain to the heart of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For the Lord says, Sadhava Hidayam Mahayam. The pure devotee is always within the core of my heart. The Lord's feelings are like those of a father who feels pain when his child is in pain. Therefore, offenses at the lotus feet of a pure devotee are serious. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has very strongly recommended that one not commit any offense at the lotus feet of a devotee. 
Such offenses are compared to a mad elephant because when a mad elephant enters a garden, it causes devastation. Therefore, one should be extremely careful not to commit offense with the lotus feet of a pure devotee. Actually, Maharaj Ambarish was not at all at fault. The Vasha Muni unnecessarily wanted to chastise him on flimsy grounds. Maharaj Ambarish wanted to complete uh, the Ekadashi para, Parana as part of devotional so service to please the Lord, to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he drank a little water. But although the Vasha Muni was a great mystic Brahmana, he did not know what is what. That is the difference between a pure devotee and a so-called learned scholar of Vedic knowledge. The devotee, being always situated in the core of the heart, Lord's heart, surely get all instructions directly from the Lord as conformed with the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> 10, 11. Tesham evanu kampartham aham ajnana jam tamaha nashayam yatma bhavasto jnana dipena bhashrata. Out of compassion for them, I, dwelling in the hearts, their heart destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. The devotees do not do anything not sanctioned by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As it is said, Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra Vigya Na Bhujaya. Even the most learned or experienced person cannot understand the movements of a Vaishnava, a pure devotee. No one therefore should criticize a pure Vaishnava. A Vaishnava knows his own business. Whatever he does, is precisely right because he is always guided by the personality, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Just want to speak a little bit about Srila Prabhupada and his connection. <coughs> Today is the appearance of Srila Prabhupada right the next day after Krishna's Janmashtami. So it is to be understood that um, that you can know a pure devotee of Krishna by the mercy of Krishna. So yesterday is Janmashtami, glorifying Krishna and his appearance. Today is Prabhupada's appearance. So by the mercy of Prabhupada we can know Krishna. So either way, so, <coughs> Srila Prabhupada, you know, he did so much that um, no human being can achieve in, in, a, in a short time. As you can see at the Hare Krishna movement today, uh, this is a result of our Melbourne temple, is Prabhupada's hard work. <coughs> and We witnessed that. Sometimes we talk about Krishna's pastimes and Krishna. This, is, this happened 5,000 years ago. We haven't really saw that, but from the scriptures we know glories of Krishna and his pastimes still, place, still exist in India, Vrindavan, Mathura, and all other places. But Srila Prabhupada, we've seen with our eyes, we witnessed Prabhupada's activities and like I said, this is the movement, the Hare Krishna movement is the result of Prabhupada's work. And we, the followers of Srila Prabhupada, our, our devotees of ISKCON, particularly ISKCON, it's Prabhupada named this International Society for Krishna Consciousness. We are family of Srila Prabhupada. We are part of the family of Srila Prabhupada. Just like Krishna has a big family. Krishna's family is huge. We can't imagine how big his family. Krishna had 16,108 wives. And each wife had 10 children and them had uh, expansion. Big family. Jadu Bamsa. Discussing, describing about it, uh, Krishna's appearance yesterday, these things. So we are in the family of Srila Prabhupada and we don't have to do anything. Just have to be part of the family. You don't have to do anything. You just be part of the family. Just be around. Just like yesterday, we witnessed it. We couldn't get in the temple. 
We're so packed. So, but just be here. Everything is going on by the mercy of Prophet Prophet. He planted the seed, and we have the Hare Krishna movement today in such a big way, such a big society all over the world. He started in America, not in India. Everybody in India wants to follow the West. So when Prabhupada came to India with Western disciples, then they took him seriously. He started to, wanted to open a temple in India. When there's so many sadhus in India, they, they didn't take him seriously. But this is all Krishna's plan. Like it mentioned here, Prabhupada was criticized. <coughs> Vaishnava Parad, to be careful to offend a devotee. Prabhupada was criticized for initiating white person into Brahmana, uh, giving them sannyas. So the Brahmanas of India, they were jealous. They said, uh, how can you initiate these milachas like this? It's not that Prabhupada did it because he wanted to, because Krishna wanted him to do it. This is Krishna's decision. Bhakti Siddhanta Shastri to talk to the, the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. He told him to go and preach Krishna consciousness in the Western world. That's why he wasn't able to do it in India, because <coughs> he was supposed to preach in the West. And even going there wasn't easy. An elderly man without money, going on a ship. All of us, we came here, young age. They check, they give you a point system. If you are a young person, then you're eligible, 50%. Probably at the age of 60 plus, 70, he was going to America on a ship. Even he went, asked the permission <coughs> that Muraji Desai. She said, you're an elderly man. He was, she was laughing, how you can go to America on a ship? He will die. Prabhupada said, don't worry, you will see. He always said that, you will see. Sometimes we also, we are franticking, oh, how, how are we gonna do it? Like open a business, it's, 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 a, um, it's a gamble. If you will uh, failure or success, you don't know that. If you invest money, it can lose everything, but you still have trust that it will be successful. You, you have that positive understanding that it will be a good business. It will flourish, it will be expand. So Prabhupada, it was not a gamble, but Prabhupada took it full-heartedly, the instruction of his Guru Maharaj. He knows that whatever Krishna says, whatever a Vaishnava says, it's always <coughs> truthful. So he has done the work, the Hare Krishna movement. We have all these facilities. Like I said, we, just, we just have to be part of the family and do whatever we can and expand it. Since Prabhupada left this planet, from that time, so much expansion, so many more temples, more than double, so many more devotees. Because Prabhupada's blessing is onto us. For those who carry on the message of his Guru Maharaj, the spiritual master will bless you. In fact, it's the mercy of the spiritual master that we are able to do something. Srila Prabhupada himself said, I, I'm nothing. He said, Bhakti Vinod Thakur could have done it all. He, he, he said, I'm just a tool in his hand. This is just like this temple if you started this temple right in the beginning, it would be difficult. Find, in fact, I've heard they didn't want to sell this temple to the Hare Krishnas because they didn't want to give to the religious people this place. A devotee went in the suit and tie, tricked them. And so many temples in the world, the same thing. Prabhupada told them to do it like this. 
not that you, you know a lot of stories. It's not that you hear it. It's elderly, it's very Papa decided. So, um, whatever it is, Papa's there always behind. So, right now, we, we're here. <coughs> if we make a sincere effort to please Krishna, make a sincere effort to preach Krishna consciousness, sincere eff effort to expand Krishna consciousness, more temples, more books, more devotees, Prabhupada will bless us. That's how it works in Krishna consciousness. It's a miracle. Some say it's a miracle. They actually don't know what is a miracle. The miracle we know is the mercy of Bhagwan. It's the mercy of Krishna. That is the miracle. You can eat a lot of food, but you don't know if you're digested or not. Just for the taste, you can get sick. So Krishna is giving from within that fire to digest. That is a real miracle. Cow eats the grass and you get milk. And from milk you get paneer, yogurt, uh, srikan we had last night. Just cow just eats the grass. How did it get transformed into such varieties of food? Just from grass. We grass, but we don't get anything like that. So that is real miracle. So ev every moment we're creating miracle. The real miracle is the mercy of Prabhupada. It's the mercy of Krishna. Otherwise, why one man, Prabhupada, one elderly man, can do so much? And he didn't have that many disciples those days. Only a handful of his disciples. He said, you go to Germany, you go to Europe, you go to India, you go. Just 10, 20 people. And they did so much. Why? Because Prabhupada blessed them. That's how it works. India and India, they say, oh, Swamiji, Ashirvaddo, please bless me. They know. We know underneath that the blessing is it that, that works. It's the mercy of the Vaishnava that, it, that is flourishing everything. It's all belong, the glory belongs to Prabhupada. It's his glory. You will have any glory because it's his glory. We are simply carrying on the leg, the, that, the, the, this, that licency of Krishna consciousness. So that's why it's mentioned here that pure devotees, they are there in the heart of Krishna. Krishna says, Tamaham sarva bhuteshu name deshasthina priya, je bhajanti tumam bhakta, mai tete shucha priya. Krishna says, Tamaham, I'm equal to all, but those who serve me, je bhajanti tumam bhakta, worship me, my devotees, they're in me. And I am in them. May tete suchap priya. They are dear to me. Priya. So Krishna is in our heart. He's, 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 he's always there to bless us for those sincere devotees who are making the sincere effort to serve him and preach Krishna consciousness. Follow the orders of Guru Maharaj, the spiritual master. It's not simply a talk. If we really want to please the spiritual master, we have to move on. We have to follow forward that instruction of Prabhupada. Then the blessing will shower on us. Just like yesterday we saw it was raining. All day was sunny, raining at night. And that didn't stop people from coming to the temple. Of course we have the tents. Last year, year before that, it's every time there's rain. That that's the shows how sincere you are. You don't care, rain or not. It's still people lining up to come to the temple. You go out on the Friday night and you see people lining up to go to the nightclub. Big, huge line at Manari Nama. So this huge line way down the road. What do you get out of that? That's, that's nonsense. When you come to the temple, you pray. And these people, they can only get to see the deity for a second. And then you have to go. They have to keep moving. But that, that pleasure is seeing Krishna. Just a momentary. That gives a greater joy to a devotee. So we do not know who comes to the temple. That's why it's mentioned here. One should be careful not to offend a devotee. 
Yesterday I went Harinam. All day fasting and Harinam, three hours. I came back, I couldn't say a word because I was, my voice was choked. I, I was, <coughs> couldn't sing. This big feast, I avoided eating all the Srikan and stuff. So that that's, uh, ruined your voice. So I can speak this morning. Then I saw two Indian ladies, never seen them before, suddenly just appear in Harinam. And they were, ah, Hare Krishna. I said, where they came from? You don't know who they, people come from somewhere. They could be anybody. So I said, them, Kida Sayaya, Ki. Like you came from, you're a Devata, you came from heaven or what? And then they left after about a half an hour. So we don't know who comes to the temple. Sometimes the demigods, they come as an ordinary person to participate in the Sankirtan movement, spread Krishna consciousness. Just like those devotees in the beginning. People don't understand. They're not white Americans. They're demigods. Or who knows? They came to assist Prabhupada. So we have to be careful who people are. We are in this temple. All kinds of people are coming. Before, before in the Satya Yuga. Satya Yuga, Satya De, Dapar Kali. We are living Kali Yuga. Satya Yuga, people used to come, the demigods used to come down here from the heavenly planets and, and interact with us. Because Satya Yuga people are very, very pious and very religious. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. They want to associate the Sadhu down here. That's why associating with devotees is emphasized strongly in the scripture. So the demigods used to come down. We are not Sadhu. We drink somewhere else, we are enjoyers. But they are religious, they are sura, they are demigods. So they, they used to come down here and associate with devotees. So I believe that those people that came to assist Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada didn't have anybody, no followers. He just sat down on a tree, chanting Hare Krishna. And people were coming one by one. Those people, whatever they're doing before, eating meat, taking care of it, they give it up as soon as they met Prabhupada. As if they were waiting for Prabhupada. As soon as he came, he joined them. That's the proof. How much evidence you want to know? So we have to be very careful to mention here that don't judge devotee. Of course, we will also judge because people are there observing. If I don't tell you uh, about anything about Krishna consciousness, how are you going to know? We also need to instruct you. But at the same time, Krishna consciousness is a very, is a very a subtle matter. So we are associating with each other. So when Prabhupada started the Hare Krishna movement, it's a very difficult time. We didn't have facilities like we have today. Fancy fusharam. Here we have Ekadashi. We have big, big breakfast, like a feast. I always look forward to Ekadashi because it's, let's say, it's like even more than a normal day. Our time, Ekadashi, I never look forward to it. They didn't have any breakfast because you know, we had to do, had to do a half day fast in Ekadashi. Then later on I found out they didn't have enough money to feed us. They didn't have breakfast. Now we have so much prasharam here, so much food. But we know this is the mercy of Prabhupada. It's his hard work we have this facility today. We should never ever think in our mind that it's because of my effort. You plant the seed, then it's not easy. If you try to grow an avocado, it takes years before you can get an avocado. You put a seed, it takes ages for the plant to come up, 10 years perhaps to get an avocado from an avocado tree. There's so much work. So I'm giving this example. Prabhupada done the work, built the Hare Krishna. He, he, 
he's the pillar of the Hare Krishna movement. And those devotees that assisted him, those devotees that were Prabhupada in those days, the pioneering of Krishna consciousness, is because of them we have this Hare Krishna movement standing today and flourishing. <laughs> so if we sincerely want to please Prabhupada, then stay here in the Hare Krishna movement. It's not simply a bunch of words or prayers that we put flower at the feet of Prabhupada. If you really want to please Prabhupada, you have to work hard like he did. Our spiritual master, our, uh, our previous acharyas, <coughs> they were all hardworking acharyas. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Gorakasadas Babaji. He was a Babaji, but he, he, he produced Bhakti Siddhanta. Prabhupada used to say, if you want to be a Babaji, you have to make some one person like Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur. And he, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, made one person that Prabhupada, and he preached all over the world. Then he can be a Babaji. <coughs> Not you just wear a loin cloth, eat once a day. Prabhupada worked more hard than a Babaji, sitting all day. He went all over the world. Just last night we had a the, 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 the midnight Janmashtami, and everyone was still asleep today. Prabhupada was up every night. He never slept. Only a little bit. A little bit of nap in the afternoon. All night he was translating. He didn't sleep that much. And he was traveling every day. Prabhupada used to say, I'm traveling all over the world, preaching Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada's motive was just to, there's nothing, he didn't want anything from anyone. People are ready to give him millions of dollars. Prabhupada said, no. He gave us. We are at his mercy. He said, I'm here in the West just to make you happy. Happy. The people are hippie. He said, oh, I'm here to make you happy. Who goes to the Western country as an elderly man with no money and a ship to make you happy? Paraduka Dukhi. Pure body sees others unhappy. He's feeling unhappy. Just like sometime in an office, we, we, we want to see you get to the top. You pull people down so you can be the top. A Prabhupada, he is always very humble. He says, Hare Krishna movement. He could have saw Prabhupada movement. He said, Hare Krishna movement. He wants to see Krishna famous. Nobody knows Prabhupada. They saw Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Then they later they know when they join the temple, they come here. So all the books, we're selling Krishna books yesterday by bo boxes. <laughs> Only after we joined the Hare Krishna movement, he know Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada didn't want himself to be in the front and famous. He is famous. He wanted Krishna, glories, glories of Krishna. He wanted to preach Krishna consciousness the glories of the holy name. Even here in the 70s and 80s, they saw us in the street. They said, oh, there goes the Hare Krishna singing. Because this is Prabhupada who started the Hare Krishna movement with chanting in the street. In, in those days, they would go to Harinam every day, day and night. They are all in the street. They spend very little time in the temple. I remember when I first joined, in Mayapur, in the 70s, um, even they sent us in the street. They sent us in Calcutta. We are from Mayapur to do Harinam. It wasn't easy. People used to call us all kinds of names and stuff those days. They used to call us CIA, all this nonsense. <laughs> now they know we are genuine people, Vaishnavas. Not anything other than that. And I remember in uh, 1977, <coughs> our temple was attacked by uh, um, Mohammedans, uh, local uh, Muslims. And uh, Prabhupada was in America, or somewhere, it wasn't in Mayapur. And uh, 
They, they attacked all Mayapur, 300 of them. Our temple was that time very small. I mean, temple's big, but we didn't have any devotees. And so they had to lock the temple, and they were all over there smashing the gates and the gardens and the lights. We were on the roof, we were throwing down rocks. And nothing happened because they had shield. They came in big, 300 people with sticks. They wanted to beat us up. So Mayapur became very famous. It was in the newspaper. After that, Mayapur people were coming to see the ISKCON, this, where this happened. So when Prabhupada heard, he said, just like when Krishna was in Vrindavan, uh, Kamsa was sending demons. He said that, so similarly, uh, when we were trying to preach Krishna consciousness, uh, you know, demons were coming, attacking us. Prabhupada said that. I witnessed that. I was there. <laughs> and even in India, you can have a gun for security, but nobody has a license to shoot because <laughs> everybody's traveling. And the guns are locked away in the, inside the Almira. In India, they call it Almira in a big case, metal case. So you have to get, if you want to go to the Almira, you have to go through, go down, go to another building. There's more, all these people with the stick down there. <coughs> this is all this drama. And we're chanting Nishingare prayers. We're we, I was a little kid. We were throwing down rocks and stuff. Nothing. The devotees were really hurt. Some of the devotees had to go to the hospital like that afterwards. And it was in the newspaper, and then Mayapur became really famous. So sometimes Krishna does this in a way to make Krishna consciousness more famous. But we have to surrender to Krishna. You see, this Christianity, if you read the Bible, not Bible, the Christianity, those, those people that were preaching, Christians, they were executed badly. They were burned in the fire and stuff those days, in the thousand years ago. They really sacrificed. But we are all having a good time here. We are preaching Krishna consciousness. Oh, yeah. We talk big, big philosophy. We are having a big play of halava afterwards. <laughs> Prabhupada worked really hard. Really, really hard. And this is just like I was saying, in, a, in the 70s in Mayapur, they would make prasharam plates according to the how many number of devotees. Suppose maybe there are 25 devotees, they make 25 plates. They put sabji, rice, dal, very simple. They didn't have, we only saw halava once a year, Janmasami time. We didn't know, like, I, I would have better food at home than the temple. <laughs> and uh, they would say, prasharam, and we all come and take our plates. It was already made, everything on it. And there was no seconds and third. You just have to eat what's already there. That's it. They didn't have much money to make enough food for everybody. And we're eating that that was meant for food for life. But nobody was complaining. Or some kids like me used to complain. Because Prabhupada was there. Prabhupada was the man behind everyone that made everyone happy. Prabhupada wasn't always there in Mayapur. Vrindavan, once a year. He was always traveling. But that once a year, we heard his coming. And that was in our mind. Prabhupada's coming. Prabhupada's coming. Six months to go. We didn't care, six months. If someone's coming six months, like, oh, that's a long time away. Eight months. But that was always in our mind. Prabhupada's coming. And you can just imagine that Prabhupada's coming in 50 days, in one week. We feel like ex total ecstasy. You know, those days we didn't have any laborers. We'd, do, we'd clean all the toilets, Mayapur, we'd paint the building, sweep the road, make everything new for Prabhupada's arrival. And like, oh, Prabhupada's coming today. Wow, everyone's like, total ecstasy. You see Prabhupada sitting here. And he's listening. Don't think he's not there. Prabhupada's there. And when Prabhupada arrived, first, first time I saw him, Everybody talks so much. Oh, we are from India, we see many sadhus. We're not like really <coughs> excited. Like I had Jati Guru. We have family gurus in a, in a family. So when Prabhupada is like, all the foreigners are making big fuss. Oh, Prabhupada's Prabhupada coming, so yeah. And we also got excited. <coughs> like even Srila Prabhupada, his friend was telling him 
to meet these sadhu. Those bhakti siddhanta sadhu said, they talk, but he said, no, no, we have so many sadhus, I don't want to see another one. So his friend told him, no, 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 you have to go see him, he's different. And then when he met him, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told him, he preached Krishna consciousness in the, in the Western country, the first time. So I had the same feeling, I thought, oh, so many sadhus, you know, what, what's the big deal? But Prabhupada was different. And he, he was surrounded by all these foreigners. Prabhupada is quite short, like my size, a little bit bigger maybe. All these big Americans, you know, Danda, Sanyasi, but they're all so obedient to Prabhupada. I thought, oh, he is very special. You know, the awe and respect and the, and, and the worship Prabhupada God, <coughs> just like when Krishna was here. When Prabhupada came out of the car, when he walked out of the car, Prabhupada, we had a group of kirtaniers, two groups, <coughs> one on the one side, the other one on the other side. So he got out of the car in Mayapur in the front gate. <laughs> There's a long way to walk all the way to the Lotus Building. And they, that, that, that road, they have it anymore because of the POEP. So, and, uh, and they had two boys. We had, we had a basket of rose flower. So one boy on the one side, other boy the other side. So the thing was, <coughs> Prabhupada lifted his feet, put the other feet down. So when he lifted the other feet, so we had to be really quick. We would put flour on the, on the floor, so Prabhupada's feet would go on the flour. So the other boy on the other side, when he's, that other feet comes up, he has to put flour on the floor. So when Prabhupada feet is, put his feet down on the flour, rose, so we had a big basket. So we're like this, you know, it's like that, you know, all the way to the, uh, the, the main gate, to the uh, Lord's building. And both sides of the kirtan, and the kirtan was not just like, they had to, Medanga place has to go down like this, and come up, go down, both sides. Two medanga, the four Medanga players. They didn't know how to play, they were just banging it in you know, those days. Not like now. And they were, they were going, <laughs> they both going, and they had chadar like this big tilak. Those days we didn't have uh, like fancy kurtas and silk and nothing. If you see all photos, we were just bare chested, just a chadar. I had, not, if you see my old photos, there's no, like, no fancy stuff. Just a chadar like this. We even no shirt. A big, big tilak. And then we were just putting flour, both of us, and flour, and the kirtan groups, like, it was so fancy. And they had uh, fireworks on both sides. <coughs> In India, there's not really fireworks those days. They just go boom, boom, just some sound. And it is the middle of the day. Got to the temple, <coughs> and uh, they had marajis. Uh, they would be on each floor, and they would be bringing down flour on Prabhupada's head on the lotus building. They're supposed to be the apsaras. They bring uh, flower, demigods. <laughs> it was so amazing. And Prabhupada was not touched by any of this um, reception. He was just looking up. I was thinking, wow, this is so puffed up. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada's not even reciprocating. So everybody said, no, no, Prabhupada is just looking at Krishna. He's, he's not attached to this glory. <laughs> so, uh, I was a small kid, but I knew uh, that uh, the sadhus, they have power, and they can. And then people are offering flower like today. So it was my turn to put the flower. And then sometimes Prabhupada would look at you and stuff. So he was like uh, he having an extra look <laughs> at me. I think, oh my God, he's checking me out. Uh, stuff I do, you know, in the past. Maybe he knows what I'm doing. <coughs> he's looking at. So sometimes the sadhus, they know what we're going to be. Are we going to be serving him? Are we going to dedicate our life to him? He can tell those things. We're going to st still stick around to Prabhupada. He can tell us through our heart. He can see right through you. That's, that's what I felt. I felt like that. Prabhupada was looking at me. Oh, I better be a good boy for him. And then I, I learned to appreciate Prabhupada because of the foreigners. They were so crazy for Prabhupada. Like, I, have, I was not crazy for anyone, not even for my parents. But I learned to appreciate Prabhupada's glory from the Westerners, because they love Prabhupada so much. <coughs> Maybe, so that's what I was trying to tell. Maybe they were already connected from before. They knew him, they knew him from before, perhaps. But I didn't know Prabhupada is. But everyone is so, uh, 
I also, I, uh, so I used to play midanga before. And uh, they didn't have a midanga teacher. They just bang it. So I was really good at banging it. I really quick and fast. So the prophet would come down from his room upstairs to go come to the program, temple program. And they say, you sing. Jaya Prabhupada. And really crazy. And then uh, everybody loved it. That's why he got me to sing. So I was like too fired up. And so he finished the Bhagavatam class, he'd go up. So you sing again. Jaya Prabhupada is going up. And he'd be already up in his room. He's still going. Okay, he's already there. Stop now. So Prabhupada, he was very reciprocating. And very merciful. He, he knew our future, perhaps. Sometimes the devotee says, they had a question, they want to ask Prabhupada. And they said, Prabhupada already answered it. Like he knew their minds. So he was talking according to everyone. And everybody knew what Prabhupada was answering. Sometimes I like, like I'm in my eye, I don't want to go to the temple, I don't want to listen to person giving class. I just thought, oh, I better just go in and sit, listen a little bit. <laughs> just as, it were, as I walk in, sit down to listen to person talking, and whatever was in my mind that day, that person's talking about that. You know, like Krishna arranges, so you can uplift your consciousness. He, sh he gives his mercy because we have that sincerity a little bit. Krishna said, I'm sitting in the heart of all the living entities. I guide them accordingly when they so turn to me. I show them the path. So when we make a little bit of an effort, Krishna from within, that spiritual master comes also. He comes to guide us. Cheta Guru. The original guru is Balaram. We had a lot of Balaram's appearance. The Adi Guru. I wrote about it in the Facebook. Everyone is putting a thumbs up. So Adi Guru is Krishna. So Prabhupada, he's a representative of Krishna. He used to read his own book. Sometimes the bodies are he reading. So they were very, very curious. And said, Prabhupada, why are you reading your book? You, you wrote it. He said, I didn't read it. I didn't write it. Krishna wrote it. He was dictating what Krishna told him. Otherwise, then one elderly man can write so much, so quickly. Those that didn't have the, such advanced technology now, as that, like today. So, Prabhupada is Krishna's personal associate, representative. So that's why you always have to take this Krishna consciousness very sincerely, very seriously, because Prabhupada is still here. Vyasa Puja today, Vyasa Puja today is his appearance. It's not just this he appears today, he's here always. One devotee was telling me, he wanted to leave the Hare Krishna movement, go away. And he was in the temple, he was telling Prabhupada, I'm going away. As he was walking out, he heard a voice. He said, don't go away, I need you. Still here. So sometimes we think, um, you know, things lightly. Don't think that it happened so many years ago. Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago. Uh, this is mythology. People say like that. I never saw my grandfather. Oh, mythology, I never saw him. So many things you can't see. Doesn't mean they don't exist. That's your imagination. You think whatever you think and you put your mentality on it. We have to see according to Shastra, according to the guide of the books, the scriptures, the guru, the spiritual master. They tell us. We don't know. So that's why Krishna says, we need to be serious. We need to be sincere. Accept the spiritual master, teaching of the spiritual master. Shala Prabhupada is the teacher. It's the ultimate teacher. He's not teaching us A, B, C, D. He's giving us the knowledge, like he's mentioned here. 
in the purport. Yeah. Tesam an evanuana kampartam aham agyana jam tama. Nasayam atma bhavasto gana dipena bhashata. Out of compassion for them, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. The Guru does that. Om Agena Divinandasya, Genandana Slakaya. He's the one who opens our eyes with the shining lamp of knowledge, removing the darkness. <coughs> like a knife, he cuts our ignorance, our ego. Sharp knife of knowledge. Sadhu means the one who is sharp in, in understanding the knowledge. He cuts our, our ignorance, our, our uh, uh, misunderstanding of Krishna consciousness, misunderstanding of, of, of the spiritual teachings of the spirit, spiritual master of devotional service. He opens our eyes. Just like if you're still sleeping in the room, 10 o'clock already, sun's out. You're thinking, oh, it's so middle of the night. Still sleeping. Because you're dark, you don't know. You think, oh, nighttime, I'm sleeping. It's already 10 o'clock, or maybe even 12 o'clock. I've heard people sleep like all day. You, you open the curtain. Oh, what am I doing? Get up. You see, in Australia, people, they love the sun. They go out on the beach, all day lying in the sun. Vitamin D. Or whatever. So we are spiritual masters. They are giving us this knowledge. Removing the darkness in our heart. The sitting, we are sitting in this body for a lifetime in different forms. They're, sh they're showing, Prabhupada is here to show his mercy. Compassion. His blessings. Ultimate compassion. His ultimate mercy is to lift us up from this material world. Bring us to Krishna. From the encagement of the material existence. The suffering of the material world. <laughs> like it's not like people do gambling to get money, to make money. It's not easy to make money. Gambling people who, they also organize, make sure that not everybody wins. They, have to, they also have to make money. So the reason why I'm saying this, <coughs> material world, maya, is, is a big gamble. Hard existence, material existence. Very tough to live in this world. Very tough. Sometimes it's purposely done. We are living here. If we think, oh, it is so nice here. I want to be here. We don't want to make any effort to go to Krishna. When there is suffering, we turn to God. Oh, hey, Bhagavan, get down here. Please, oh, Krishna. So the spiritual master comes to dissipate the darkness of ignorance, showing us the path to happiness. Prabhupada wants America to make everyone happy. We take shelter of the Hare Krishna movement. Doesn't matter. Everyone, we come here, we fall at the feet of Krishna because Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. He's giving us that happiness in the core of our heart that we're looking for that satisfaction. That satisfaction, you can't get it out of material things, spiritual happiness. That only comes from Hare Krishna, from serving Krishna. You simply chant 16 rounds a day, chant Hare Krishna, sing and dance. What do you get out of it? You get it just like the Kirtan. You get a sore leg, but you know we're getting the blessing of Krishna. That the shukha, the subtle happiness, that can offer by Maya. So Prabhupada, he has descended to this world. Vyasa Puja. He is a representative of Vyasadeva. He is representative of Krishna. Sadhu Nam is mentioned here. Sadhu. Sadhu, this verse, right? Sadhavo hidayam mayam. Sadhu. Great sadhu. I asked one sannyasi, Maharaj, you are a great sadhu. He said, done, 
Don't call me a sadhu, I'm not a sadhu. Prabhupada, <coughs> as I was telling the story, Prabhupada was respected like God. But not for an inch, not one inch, he was thinking, I am, I deserve this. He was always looking at Krishna. If you go to Bindavan, not Bindavan, if you go to Mayapur, any temple, they have Prabhupada's murti facing here, facing the deity. Because Prabhupada wanted to see Krishna. Always he was thinking of Krishna. Sometimes tears in his eyes. Those who are close to him, they can tell you. Prabhupada's eyes were always soft with water. He was looking at Krishna. He was thinking how I can bless. Krishna, please bless these people. Radha Gopinath in Sydney. Prabhupada told the deity, please stay here. These people don't know what they're doing. Bless them. Guide them. Radha Gopinath. Very beautiful Radha Krishna in Sydney temple. So Prabhupada always thinking for the ultimate welfare of the people. He worked so hard as a spiritual master of our founder guru. He's an example how hard we have to work. You see all those devotees in the beginning days, they worked so hard to open the temples all over the world. It's not that we come here in the temple and everything is all nice. No, it's all here because of Prabhupada's mercy. We can always reflect that. That's why I'm here today, because of his mercy. All of us, same. So all of us have to reflect that. But by the mercy of Prabhupada, by the mercy of the Vaishnavas, those hardworking devotees, by their mercy, that we have some success. We have these temples. We always write, we are a speck of dust at the feet of the Vaishnava. We are just a tiny tools in the hand of our Guru Maharaj. This is how we have to think. Not that, oh, I'm going and I'm doing this, I'm doing that. <coughs> if we remain humble, execute the orders of our Guru Maharaj, do our service to Krishna without any offense. Then you see the miracle. Even now. What Prabhupada did, you can also do. Because he will bless you. If we have that desire to preach like Prabhupada. There's one person who said, he used to say, Prabhupada, I want to be just like you. Everybody is super angry. He said, how offensive you are. How can he be now? telling yourself that you want to be just like Prabhupada. You're offensive. Prabhupada said, wait, wait, wait. He said, fantastic. If someone can be like me, we can do double preaching. <laughs> double temples, more Krishna consciousness. Of course, we don't say, I want to be just like you, but we can follow in the footsteps of our, our guru. <coughs> so I know, I'll give you an example. There's a Maharaj in Hong Kong temple. I live in Hong Kong. Very skinny. I never saw her eating. Never saw her eating. Once I opened the door, she was behind the door eating an apple. And she is there every day, five o'clock in the morning till <laughs> two in the afternoon. Worked so hard. She's skinny like this. Never saw her eating. She can do more work than any strong person. So, uh, I mean, she doesn't accept any glory. So I always thought to myself, how can she do so much work? Is because she's sincere. Krishna blesses her. People are ringing up. They want birthday cake. She's the one who does it. Really good cakes. And everything. So many other things. She's like the backbone of the temple. She's just skinny one lady. You know, like, but because they surrender to Krishna. Krishna blesses them to do this. That is miracle. They can do so much. How did you do it Prabhu? We always say to ourselves. Mataji, that's fantastic. He said, no, no, I didn't do Krishna's mercy. This is how we have to have the attitude. Attitude to the devotee is that I think this is the mercy of my Guru Maharaj. Just like Prabhupada taught himself. <coughs> so it's like with Chani Hare Krishna. We can do Kirtan hours and hours. How did you do this? Putting a sore leg and we just continue. Because Krishna blesses. 
He's there in the main. We don't feel tired. We feel ecstatic. Just like yesterday was a very intense day for us. No food to eat. There's pusharam everywhere and you can't eat it. That's the hardest part. Oh my God, my cheesecake, oh, give me some of that. No, I can't have it. Fasting. This is like ocean of pusharam. Everywhere you look like, oh come on. We can't touch. No sense gratification. Thank you. Take shelter of the holy name. So I went in the ashram. Nobody around chanting Japa. So I don't have to see all this. You can't get in the temple anyway because it's so crowded. So Prabhupada blesses us. He empowers us. Shaktevesh avatar. Sometimes we say Shaktevesh. Guru is Shaktevesh. He empowers us. <laughs> that doesn't go for a guru. Anyone. All of you. You can cook unlimited food stuff. Prabhupada, somebody gave Prabhupada a coconut to drink, coconut water. Somebody told me this. I don't know how, how, how uh, I haven't heard directly. But one day he told me, in India, when I go to Mayapur, uh, at least for one week I don't drink any water. I drink only coconut because I don't trust the water. I'm sick. The moment I take water, I'm sick. So that was those days. Now the coconut price gone up. So if you have like five coconuts a day, that's a couple hundred rupees. Like you think oh, it's just rupee, but it goes fast. So anyway, uh, I just have to make friends with the rich people. <laughs> so what I was saying, uh, Prabhupada was, they gave Prabhupada a coconut to drink. And everybody wants some maha prasadam, like maha maha. You know, sometimes they jump on your plate, you haven't even finished yet. So maha prasadam Prabhu. They want to like grab it out of your mouth, this kind of a thing. Just coming out of here, ah, Shadam, like in your birthday. <laughs> so probably I haven't finished yet. <laughs> oh. So they're all expecting Prabhupada drinking, but Prabhupada knows. He always, he never ate, he always gave his remnants to his disciples. So he, gave, he drank the coconut. There's only a, enough water in there for one person, maybe two, if it's a big coconut. There's about 10 people. So he, they all drank after, and they gave it to the next person. They kept going. <coughs> and they all looking at Prabhupada. Oh, Prabhupada said, ah, that's magic, huh? <laughs> Prabhupada had magic. And it was the end when Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, uh, when he's leaving his body. He couldn't walk, so they had to carry him on a palanquin, Kodashan. So if you get on the palanquin, <coughs> you need four people to carry, right? And it's quite heavy. Even if you are a young kid, still. You, you get ready, and you want to come to pick it up. <laughs> so they all got four guys. They got ready to pick up Prabhupada on a palanquin. And that day, they just, they just like lifting up this cup. Prabhupada's not heavy. They all looked at Prabhupada like, ah, today I'm very light. <laughs> they, Prabhupada had the mystic power. They, there are eight types of mystic CD. You can become heavier than the heavy, light than the light. And he, had, he made himself very light. And they picked him up like a pick, uh, picking up a cotton. Prabhupada, they, they were like, they're amazed. So Prabhupada did have mystic power. So he, he, he says his ultimate mystic power, he, he, can, he can transform uh, all these Westerners to a Vaishnava. He can, even if you bring a coin from this year to this year, from pocket to from here, but he can't make a Mlechaya devotee. That is the ultimate mystic power that Prabhupada did. And then one time Prabhupada was putting tilak on the tenth floor. <laughs> Prabhupada, uh, um, we, ha we have to go now. The car is waiting for you downstairs. He said, you go down and I'll meet you there. So when they went down, Prabhupada was already there. So who said Prabhupada doesn't have mystic power? He can fly. So there's so many stories like that. They had this little book called Little uh, Drops of Nectar by Satsuru Maharaj. I haven't seen that book so much. They sell little, little stories to, by different devotees. But even myself, <coughs> like I was saying before, I, I saw Prabhupada uh, 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 when I came to see Guru Puja time. And a couple days before, I, I stole some milk sweets. 
you know, offered in my bead bag. Then I was offering, I was, I, in India we all know sadhus know everything. So I was looking at Prabhupada, he, you know, Prabhupada knows. Because he was giving me that look. I knew, I know that he knows that I stole. <laughs> so I was thinking, please forgive me. So, you know, sometimes the bead bags are always very sticky. You know, we put stuff in there. <laughs> uh, I don't do that anymore. There's so much food here. When you're a kid, you all, you're crazy for sweets for some reason. <laughs> so, <coughs> Prabhupada is, is, is given us everything to make us totally satisfied. Totally satisfied. So, you, this is the glorification of Srila Prabhupada. We are in the Prabhupada's family. Don't doubt. Don't ever doubt. Prabhupada is always there for us. He will be there for us at the time of death. Prabhupada will be here. The spiritual master comes. I have that feeling anyway. But don't think that now he can do whatever he likes. He's not watching, but he's here watching. Prabhupada's here with us. He's there in his books. Any questions? about Prabhupada or we read in the Bhagavatam. He would take, but depending on the circumstance. Sometimes he's, people gave him money and he's still talking about Krishna. He had the money on his hand and he's, he's talking and he's waving just to show that he was not attached. Preaching Krishna consciousness is higher than uh, some wealth, material wealth. Prabhupada was asked, you know, they used to always pick him up in a big car, like Mercedes, limousine, stuff like that. <coughs> so there, sometimes they would ask, Swami, you see that, that why you are going in this expensive car, you know, you are a sadhu, you should be renounced. Stuff like that. And Prabhupada said, no, mm, uh, I accept him on behalf of my guru. And he used to say that, you know, this is a tin can machine. God's riding a flower airplane. What kind of service is this? So Prabhupada was always seeing through uh, understanding. And he always gave the right answers. They were very satisfying. So he was not that, he, was, he, he took it for preaching. And, and he went to America with 40 rupees. And he bought the 40 rupees back. He didn't even use it. And look at today, we have so much. So he had the faith. Somebody give him, and so many people were very rich, they became his disciple. So Krishna, he sends his representative to assist to help him. Similarly, us also today, you know, our temple also. If everybody chip in big money, we can have another temple. Every person give your savings, little bit of your savings, $10,000, like all these people came. We'll have another temple easily in this area. God is very rich. He's the wealth. He's, he's Jagannath. He's the master of the universe. So he can give. So Prabhupada always saw, what's this money? It's nothing. And he saw the universe as Krishna's. Everything is Krishna's. One person said, he prayed to Krishna, Oh God, please, make my body made out of gold. Okay, sure. He prayed sincerely, his body was turned into gold. Tathasya. So if you made, your body is made out of gold, then you can't move. So more wealth is what Krishna gave us, not just wealth. So he, he took it as a service for spreading Krishna consciousness. He said, every bit of money you have, you use that to print books. He said that, you know that. Whenever you get money, you print books. We may get a lot of surpluses. Then you keep a, open another account for saving for children, this and that. You're not thinking, oh, I'll open, I'll, I'll print books. There are not many people. 
But Prabhupada, he, he said, you, you are all my family. Like we have a family, you have son, daughter, they want to increase the number. Prabhupada has a big family. They are all his children. We are all his children. <laughs> big family. So we are in Krishna's family. Everything will come. What's a little bit of money? We have to have faith in Krishna. So Prabhupada took for preaching. It depends on the circumstance. He may say, I don't need it. You can give it to my disciple. He'll use it. Gurujan Prabhu, you know Gurujan Prabhu. He gave Prabhupada a ring, gold and diamond, a ring. Somebody gives him a gold or diamond, oh, hey, thank you. I can trade it in or whatever, but I don't know where it. And the next day on a morning walk, and, and they were the Prabhupada uh, on a morning walk, and, and, uh, and then uh, um, this guy was next to Burjan Prabhu. They're all walking with Prabhupada, and he was wearing that ring. He said, where did you get that ring from? He said, Prabhupada gave me. So Prabhupada was very detached. <laughs> Somebody gave me really a the ring like that. You know, like I said, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to give it to just ordinary people, not even to my best friend. But Prabhupada was very detached. He just gave it away. I saw a picture of Prabhupada. He was, he was sitting in front of a big mountain of prasadam, like a big table like this. And he was sitting like this, and he was eating it. And this big hill of rice, already halfway through, he was eating it. I was thinking, well, how much can he eat? He's a Swamiji. <laughs> like, you know, Prabhupada is a big eater. And we make halava and gulab jamun because he introduced it, because he himself was a big eater. If you're a good cook, means you would like also like to eat. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I had this story at the manor um, <coughs> that Prabhupada wanted to eat uh, halava and puri <coughs> at 9 o'clock at night. Who eats halava and puri at 9 o'clock at night? And uh, so they called the, 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 um, his servant. He said, I want to eat halava and puri now. Okay, hurry up, cook some. So he went down and made halava and puri. Lots of halava, lots of puri, enough for five people. Enough for five people. And, uh, and uh, <coughs> they're bringing up the puri and the halava. Prabhupada ate it all. Big pile, enough for five person. So, and Prabhupada was up all night translating, no sleeping in. There's no worries. But his disciple, Sudaki, the Prabhu, and another, they also ate. <laughs> they cooked and ate. And so they said, Prabhupada is doing, we, we are his followers. So <laughs> they ate it. And next day, Prabhupada asked for Sudaki, the Prabhu, and the other Prabhu. And they were not around anyway. So, because they couldn't get up, they ate all this halavan puri, like Prabhupada. They want to be, follow the footsteps of Vivitachayas. So the Brahmachari, they want to get the, uh, get the clothes to go on Sankirtan. They opened the cupboard. They were inside that. They were, they were uh, having a rest. I think Prabhupada wanted to prove. <coughs> he, they couldn't keep up. Prabhupada was an elderly man, and young people couldn't keep up with Prabhupada because he was, you know, so much energy from Krishna. I never heard Prabhupada had indigestion or anything like that. And all these Westerners, <coughs> Americans, they were in Mayapur, they were all getting stomach ache, uh, diarrhea, you know, dysentery from water and things. And so, and all the Bengalis, they're working hard. They didn't have any issue with the, you know, they didn't get any sick. So Prabhupada said, you guys are not working hard like them. So eating and sleeping, so he gets sick. So you get out in the field, get out in the field and, and cut grass and plow the field. So they all got out and they all got, it, they all got better straight away. So the secret to health is to work hard. So you eat big, big food, puri and paratha, all this, and go to office and sit all day. Obviously, you're going to get sick. But there's no exercise. Every time you go to the doctor, you only see the people go to the office. They're suit and tie. They're sitting there waiting to see the doctor. You don't see laborers. They're strong. They're working hard. They don't get sick much. So my point is, <coughs> Prabhupada was the hardest working among everyone. So we have to similarly work hard. And if you get money, use that. 
in the presentation. Never think he's blind. Not even one paisa. Everything belongs to Krishna. Yes. Just like he gave you, you can also take it away. You can be a lot of money, but if your, uh, your food is not digesting, you can't eat it. What's the point? So Krishna takes, if he can take it all away, just like that. He can give and take. So Prabhupada was gifted. Krishna gave Prabhupada so much wealth. Like Sudama Bipra. Sudama Bipra, another story. He went to see Krishna for his wife pushed him. Go and get his, your friend is God. Look, I'm living in the hut. Come on, go and see him. Sometime your wife may be telling him, go get another job. You're not getting enough money. Like that. So she, he went, but he knows it's very difficult to ask God for material things. But they knew. Krishna knows everything. So when he came back, he couldn't find his hut anymore. It was transformed into a, uh, a palace made of gold. And he said, I'm not going to sleep in that house. I'm going to still sleep in the hut. You sleep there. So I'm just saying this because Krishna can give us unlimited wealth. But we should be detached in ourselves. Our attachment should be teaching to Prabhupada, to Krishna. We're not attached to those things. We're living in the spiritual world. We have everything. What do we need those things for? But we take only necessary, not too much. Not Krishna says not too little, not too too much. Natanastasi Yogasi Tati Yogi. But if you are attached, then Krishna will teach you lesson. But if you're detached, Krishna will give you because you know you don't care. See Prabhupada, he has so much, he didn't care. So similarly, we have to be the same uh, I mean, in the same consciousness. Another questions? <coughs> we have to stop here now, is it? Okay. We'll, we'll glorify Prabhupada later. They will have a program later on. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna.